Okay, so if this function, um, represented by a capital letter phi, um, is equal to uh, 2x minus y over 2y minus x, and x does not equal 2y, the main reason this is is so that we don't end up with an undefined value in the denominator. That's usually why they do something like this. Um, then is, is a function b greater than b function a? And so what this is really asking then is, um, is 2a minus b over 2b minus a greater than 2b minus a over 2a minus b. Or, just to put it another way, just treat 2a minus b as one number. Is um, a number x greater than the reciprocal of that same number? So we can do a little thinking before we actually uh, uh, figure this out. Uh, when is a number greater than its reciprocal? So if we kind of plot this out on a number line, <clears throat> we'll put 2 here and negative 2 here. We have 1, 0, and, or negative 1, 0, and 1. So clearly, uh, a number and its reciprocal are equal when that number is 1, 0, and negative one because one over negative one is the same thing as negative one. So for for these range for these specific values we aren't even considering them. But what happens in between those markers uh, changes. When one is great or when x is greater than one, um, it's absolutely greater than its reciprocal. You know, so let's say one let's say x equals three halves. Three halves is totally greater than two thirds. So here a number is greater than its reciprocal. However, when the number is a fraction less than 1 but greater than 0, let's say the fraction is 2 thirds, its reciprocal is 3 halves. So here, the number is less than its reciprocal. And basically the same thing ends up happening on the other side, or the, it ends up alternating on the other side of the, um, on the other side of 0 in the negative numbers. Um, if, uh, if x is equal to uh, negative um, two-thirds, that is a greater number than negative three-halves because negative three-halves is further from zero. The more to the right a number is, the greater is, the greater it is. So here, um, it's x itself that's greater. x is greater than its reciprocal. But then when you actually get past negative one, it goes the other way again. And um, so a number is, um, so again, we'll choose negative three-halves. Um, x in that case is less than its reciprocal here. So it alternates and so the value of um, or in, you know whether 2a minus b you know whether this thing is whether this function is greater than this function depends on whether this expression 2a minus b and this one 2b minus a are positive or negative numbers and whether this whole thing is equal to a fraction. So we need to know more. That's a long way of saying we need to know more, and it depends. Statement one uh, tells us that a is less than b. Um, so we know that um, that this fraction um, is going to be. Uh, so th this one really just tells us that two a minus b. That's a two. Two a minus b is going to be less than two b minus a. But we still actually, so it's going to be a fraction less than 1. It's going to be from this point onward. Um, because then we're going to have, so this is smaller than this. So this is smaller than this, which means it's a fraction less than 1. Uh, but we still don't know if it's actually a negative fraction. We don't have any values for a or b. And so again, that's a sometimes yes, sometimes no. And we get rid of a and d. Statement 2 tells us that 2a is less than b, which means in turn that 2a minus b is less than 0. Um, so this is a this tells us that the numerator is negative, but without knowing what respectively a and b are, we still don't know whether it's a, um, a fraction greater than negative 1 or a fraction less than negative 1. So um, we still don't have enough information about it. It's not b. Even in conjunction, we still can't tell where in this scheme um, 
this fraction is going to fall in terms of whether the number is greater than its reciprocal. So without knowing more about a and b, even in conjunction, the two statements are insufficient for us to determine an answer. Answer choice E.